Hey, 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 what's up, what's up? <laughs> hey, so okay. welcome. Yeah, we're really excited about your talk. Um, I'll hand over the mic. Um, I'll leave you to it, and then I'll come back later on for the Q&A. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate that intro. Um, yeah, honestly, I'm, I'm just uh, I'm super happy to be part of th this event. Uh, it's I think it's amazing. Um, honored, you know. I've only had a about a little over a year uh, working in 3D, so to be part of this uh, event is it's truly an honor. So I think you guys are doing an excellent job. Um, and the fact that you guys are bringing in, you know, so many different creatives uh, into sort of a single building, you know, so to say, uh, and really embracing the, the great technology that is 3D. I mean, I think it's, it's absolutely amazing. So uh, props to you guys. Thank you so much for doing that. Um, for all of you that are tuning in, uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, thank you so much for your support. Um, I hope that you guys have had a chance to maybe listen in, listen in on some previous uh, maybe conversations or maybe you're tuning into some future ones. But um, either way, you know, I hope that you guys are getting what you guys are looking for. You know, maybe something helpful for your field of work, maybe looking for um inspiration or entertainment whatever it is you know i hope you guys are enjoying yourselves and i hope that i can continue that momentum with uh my talk as well um so with that i'm gonna go ahead and share my screen all right guys so uh i'm sort of doing this in a slide format so i'm gonna be scrolling up and down through the different um areas that I'll be sort of talking through. Uh, but essentially, this is uh, an introduction to a little bit about me, uh, a little bit of my background, um, how I got into 3D, what was that journey, uh, journey sort of like. Um, and then from there, I'll walk you guys through my workflow when it comes to um, building 3D silhouettes, you know, how I go from point A to Point Z, you know. Um, I will say it's nothing crazy. I don't think I've seen anything out there that is that you know I'm, I'm doing something completely different. But it is my way of doing it. So I hope you guys can take something from it, right? Um, but yes, so I've done all that talking. But yes, my name is Jose Monroy. I'm a footwear designer. Um, I have, like uh, Daniela said, a little over 10 years of experience in the industry. Um, I was lucky enough to land a job at uh, this company called Area International, uh, where I worked for the, the good majority of the time that I've been in the industry. And at the time when I joined, um, it was actually uh, a smaller company. And so as it is with smaller companies, you tend to wear, you know, many different hats. And so that ended up being sort of a, a blessing, well, a huge blessing in disguise for me because I got the chance to really try my hand at um, many different types of product, many different types of categories, many different types of silhouettes. And so it kept my brain very flexible and very versatile very early on. And I think it's a... It's a, it, it was a really good way for me to build a, uh, a strong basis for just a well-rounded skill set, essentially, right? Um, you know, while I was there, I worked on, you know, uh, different categories such as um, uh, like work utility, um, um, heritage fashion. Um, I did a little bit of... Um, uh, well, no, actually, I did a lot of Western and English, uh, which is what the company was most known for. Um, I also did some casual product. Um, all of these I worked through uh, men's and women's. And, you know, it was uh, it was really good. It was a really good uh, sort of way to to come into learning, you know, the ins and outs of the industry. Um, and it's a great proponent of where I am today. You know, I think that it really built up that really uh, solid foundation for me to have um, 
uh, a really good uh, aesthetic sensibility just because of the different sort of refer uh, reference points that I was that I was constantly being exposed to, you know. And so that I definitely relied on that for, you know, a good part of my career. And, you know, it always worked for me, always the, the piece about staying flexible, staying versatile. And um, so about a year ago, um, I ended up starting my, uh, my independent career. And so that's where my 3D journey sort of started. Uh, so this right here is just slides of the different uh, pieces that I've worked on in this past year since I've actually started working on 3D. Um, the journey, though, I will say it definitely started a little bit before. Uh, I want to say it was probably uh, late 2020, uh, early 2021, uh, when I, you know, in social media, as as it is with creatives, you know, we follow each other, we we take inspiration from each other, and we support one another, right? And so, uh, in doing so, I, I started seeing a lot of uh, billions of of designers that I truly, truly admired moving from 2D, which was their traditional workflow, to 3D, incorporating it, right? And so uh, it was always a question as to like, how is it that they're switching so quickly? And um, it was, it almost felt like it was happening overnight. And so I was like, okay, I really need to get my hands on whatever it is that, you know, these different people are, are getting into because, you know, 3D for me had always been a thing that I was interested in. But to be honest, it it was always so, like the task was so daunting. It was, it was like, it didn't feel... Uh, I didn't feel creative, you know, uh, like the different programs that were out there. It, it was almost like scary at times. Right. And so but I ended up finding out that a lot of these people were, you guessed it, using Gravity Sketch. And so uh, that's when I really started digging into it. And, uh, you know, I was brand new to 3D. And on top of that, you know, Gravity Sketch was used for a VR headset. So it was like, oh, okay, uh, that was completely alien to me, but I'm, I was determined to, to make that leap, right? And so, uh, yeah, I, I was super excited. I, I got my headset, I wanna say midway through 2021, and I really got into it towards the end of 2021. And it literally took me, I wanna say about a week, to a week and a half to get a pretty good understanding of the different tools and functions within Gravity Sketch, which to me was absolutely an amazing, amazing thing to know just because, you know, in the past, yeah, I had tried my hands at, at different um, uh, programs. You know, I had used uh, AutoCAD, for example, in school, and it was just nothing like it, right? This, this was so, this was much more intuitive, much more creative, right? It felt more natural to me. And so it was easier for me to understand. And like I said, it, it took me about a week and a half and um, I'll share with you guys this, I'll skip through this slide, but this style right here is essentially the first style that I ever did that, um, well, I might've done one right before, but I wasn't quite happy with it, right? But this right here, literally a week and a half, it took me from, not knowing anything about Gravity Sketch to being able to produce a, a 3D model like this. Um, I, was I was absolutely stoked. And so obviously the next best thing is finding out, okay, what do you do after having an amazing model? You know, how can you make it look really nice? How can you really push it to the next level? Uh, and so, um, again, researching through the different threads, trying to figure out what people were using and Keyshot ended up being the program that really stood out. Um, majority of the reason being that, you know, it had a very similar sort of sense as Gravity Sketch, where it was just, it was very easy to use, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't too difficult, too technical, right? And so uh, I jumped right into it. Um, I invested into the program and um, this render, uh, 
I would say from when I first started with Gravity Sketch to by the time I had this render done off of Keyshot, it was literally about a month, a month's time. And so for me, that was a shock because I had pretty much zero experience with 3D prior to this point. And so it was, uh, it was absolutely amazing. And so from there, it was like, okay, I can't, I can't give up on this. I got to just keep going. And so yeah, that's where that's where my journey began. And like I said, these different uh, styles that you guys are seeing sort of displayed on the on the monitor here, those those are the different ones that I've worked through over the past year, uh, much of which have been uh, entirely created through a 3D space, uh, meaning I've sketched a couple of, of silhouettes but the iterations that come off of these silhouettes, majority of the time are done strictly in, in uh, Gravity Sketch, which is truly, truly amazing. And it's a testament to just the technology itself, how, how incredible it is. And especially for creatives, it just allows you to uh, invest in your creative ideas uh, much more, you know? Um, and so, for this talk, you know, I, I wanted to concentrate on one style specifically, just so I could walk you guys through the different steps that I take to, to get from point A to point Z. And so I ended up going with this one. This, uh, if you guys follow me on social media, this is one of the ones that I've been sort of showing uh, sneak peeks um, the last couple of days. Uh, but this is one of my latest styles. So this is actually a style that was inspired by uh, this same uh, initial style that I showed you guys. So it's almost like I'm doing a, a, a full 360, right? Uh, a year ago I started, and then a year later, you know, I'm doing a, a pretty solid update, you know, on that same style. And so uh, with this one, what I had in mind was really pushing the idea of uh, a very aggressive tread, uh, really trying to just impose that 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 visual aesthetic right that you get a lot from these different sort of mountaineering uh, slash uh, outdoor inspired uh, products that are out there in the market and so I wanted to do a flip on that previously sort of sleek silhouette by introducing this more aggressive sort of look through the bottom in addition to that I also wanted to maybe incorporate a little bit more um, sort of versatility through it. So unfortunately, I won't go into too much of the details of that piece, but essentially the design is, is set so that you can actually remove the inner uh, sort of booty, uh, which would be really, really solid in terms of adaptability with, with different environments. Um, and then really exploring the idea of uh, different layerings to really... Uh, um, look into depth and, and dimension and how those how those different materials and textures sort of play off of one another and so um as it is with you know my usual workflow i usually start with uh you know line art uh ipad i usually tend to go with art studio pro that's just my program of choice um it's been from the get-go and honestly the only reason being is because it has been the closest to Photoshop that I've found. Um, I know Procreate is, is a solid program as well or a solid application that a lot of people use, um, but it's just a thing of preference, right? And so usually the way I like to set up my, my line art is before I even start to really uh, explore different ideas, I like to uh, sort of set like a, a proportion to a real life proportion to whatever it is that I'm going to explore. So uh, previous to me putting, you know, pen on, on, on paper, I already have sort of an idea of where I want to take the product. And so uh, for me, it's, it's usually, okay, I'll go try to find a reference that I like that is similar to what I'm trying to achieve and use that as, as sort of uh, uh, a reference for a silhouette, right? Because at the end of the day, I want to try to, uh, achieve a visual of something that has proportions of, of real life product, right? And so I want to say that for these uh, different pieces, I might have used the, uh, which one was it? The Alpha Fly. 
uh, from Nike, just because I love the the slim uh, sort of dynamic aesthetic that it has. Um, and so that's essentially what I had used for the silhouette, the side silhouette and, and the top down view. But then from there, once I have the basic sort of outline, then I'll use that to sort of expand onto uh, different silhouettes or uh, exploration on details, uh, exploration on the outsole. Uh, again, I already had sort of an idea of where I wanted to take it because it was inspired by, you know, a design that I had uh, previously done. Um, but I knew I wanted to push a couple of other factors into that same bottom. And so uh, here are just some of the uh, ideations that I did. Um, this is more when I really started exploring into what it could be with that more aggressive uh, tread that I was talking about. Um but then from here, uh, this I'll usually jump directly onto Gravity Sketch. Um, usually the way I'll start is by doing an orthographic layout. So, uh, you know, I'll usually have a side profile um, and then I'll put my uh, a shot of the bottom directly under it so that um, once I start tracing it, um, I'm usually in planar mode just because I want to make sure that I'm, I'm placing the lines exactly where they should be. Um, so you guys can see here the, the amount of different lines of, of points of reference that I'm trying to include uh, before I actually start building anything that's 3D. I want to try to capture the original design as best as possible. Um, from here, uh, I'll move into the next critical part, which is um, building the last, right? So usually what I like to do is start with, uh, you know, an existing last, something that I know sort of fits the bill in terms of overall look, overall form. And uh, I start making, you know, subtle modifications wherever I need, uh, just as basically fit the, the, the silhouette that I've, that I've drawn out, right? Um, at the same time, if I need to tweak a couple of, of lines uh, to make sure that it's, you know, uh, proportionally correct, I'll definitely do that with the last. Uh, I will say the last looks very funky with, uh, with the way it's shot right there, but yes, it, it's all good, guys. It will look solid. <laughs> um, from here... Uh, so I usually, uh, I'll use that last to basically mark where I want to move the lines out to. So I'll use, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be pulling out the lines on, along the X axis to really follow the contouring of the last essentially. Um, and then just sort of placing, say, the, the, the lines around the outsole, more or less where I think they would fit. Uh, I think the, the more appropriate ones, uh, at least that play alongside the, the last, are obviously going to be the lines from the upper. Um, but here is more uh, a better sense for you guys to see sort of a hovering take of what that 3D uh, sketch would look like once it's sort of pulled out uh, from a 2D form. Um, Again, relying heavily on that last, want to make sure that the end product is really, definitely fits the bill of, of you know, what I'm trying to achieve. Um, from here, that's, that's actually when the fun part starts, which is, you know, adding the surfacing and that's where you really start to get a sense of, you know, the end look uh, of the product. And usually a lot of times in this process, um, some of the lines that you might have placed at the beginning, you know, you might find that, you know, you might have to move them slightly or you might have to modify certain things just to make sure that the, again, the end result is what you're looking for, right? Something that you're happy with. And uh, the lines are only there for reference. Um, the surfacing at the end of the day is most critical. That's because obviously that's that's where you're going to be applying your your different materials and textures, right? Um, and then this is what you get. You know, uh, it can be 
as as clean as a slipper or it can be as complicated as as something like this the capabilities uh that you know that are achievable in, in gravity sketch are absolutely amazing and so uh, yeah if, if you guys can see there's even detailing of stitching uh in certain areas uh taking into consideration um uh, material thicknesses uh, the way materials, whether they're overlapping uh, on top of each other or whether they're butted together, all those different things you're able to achieve within that 3D space. Um, from here, um, by the way, this is just uh, another sort of uh, hovering of the model, just so you guys can can sort of see a little bit better uh how the the 3D uh, sort of outline plays off of the the surfacing that was added at the end, um, but again, I mean, you you guys can see the, the intricacy that you're able to achieve within an application like this, right? It's it's truly truly incredible. Um, but then from here, usually what I'll do is I'll save it as FBX. Uh, one thing that I forgot to call out is I'm sure you guys have noticed that. All my parts are colored differently. Um, reason being uh, is that when you export it as an FBX, uh, you're able to keep these different colors. And so what that allows you to do is when you bring it into, uh, say, a program like Keyshot, where you're adding you know, materials and textures, whatever colors, whatever pieces are colored the same, once you place a material on a specific piece, whatever other parts were colored in that same manner will also pick up that same material. And so it just saves you time at the end of the day, right? Um, so from there, like I said, FBX, I'll usually take it into Blender before I take it into uh, Keyshot. And this is essentially just to optimize the file. So I want to make sure that all my surfaces are flipped, are facing the correct way. Um, all the areas um, or parts that I need to unwrap because I'm already considering doing something specific to, to maybe the shaping of a part. Uh, I need to look into that as well. And then there's also sometimes uh, little bugs that maybe sometimes you don't catch in Gravity Sketch, but you're able to see that in, in Blender. And you can just adjust that too because uh, Blender is also a, a modeling uh, program. And so uh, this right here, I want to say is, okay, yes, this is uh, the first step I take is essentially just making sure that, uh, like I said, all the faces are uh, in the correct uh, direction, which anything that comes out as red is uh, sig signifying that the the part is flipped around. So you're actually seeing the inside of the part. To be honest, I'm not quite sure why that happens, but it happens quite a bit with, with the models that I work on. So I usually have to go in and sort of flip these parts. Um, for most materials, it's not going to be that big of an issue, but I will say that with more specific materials that maybe have a little bit of a raise or, or especially if you're, doing, if you're um, dealing with displacements, you're going to want to make sure that your your part is f facing the right way. If not, every all the detail that you're uh, adding to that part is just going to go on the inside, which is definitely not what you want to do, right? And so from here, uh, I'll usually go into uh, unwrapping. So unwrapping is one of those uh, tedious processes that it – helps a lot uh, for for parts that you know again similar to you know flipping your 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 normals you want to make sure that you're doing it for parts that you truly do truly do need it uh, and uh, if not it's just going to take a really long time to be able to optimize the entire model uh, especially when you're dealing with something like this it's just it has a lot of parts to it and so usually, when I start looking into uh, unwrapping my surfaces, I'm usually just doing the ones that I know will need some type of 
uh, displacement or something that I'll end up adding something to it to where I really need it to be completely flat so that I can apply a specific texture to it. Um, this is essentially just an image of what an unwrapped version of, of this, correctly unwrapped version of this foxing would be, right? Um, this is a great example of uh, a back area, this one right here, um, that I really wanted to add this sort of honeycomb um, raised uh, application. And I knew it was going to have to be displaced because I wanted it to coincide with the, the, the border around the shape. And so this is a great example of something that you would definitely need to unwrap. So you make sure that the, the piece is completely flat. Uh, and then from there, you know, you can create your displacement map through whatever application you want. I usually end up using Illustrator just because it just gives me a more precise sort of um, uh, design, uh, especially when I'm dealing with designs like this that are you know, more sort of geometric and repetitive. I think just Illustrator just does a better job. And so um, from there, uh, once that's done, um, I'll usually, uh, save it as an FBX, which I'll end up, uh, uh, well, the FBX will end up baking any texture that you end up applying. So what you guys are seeing here will end up getting baked to the FBX that I end up uh, exporting to KeyShot. And so this is KeyShot. Uh, so once I bring in the model, this is essentially the first look. Like this, I haven't done absolutely anything to the model. It's uh, in its purest form you guys can see how even now the texture is already showing. And that's again, because that was already baked uh, from uh, the FBX coming out of Blender, right? Um, and then from here, that's when I really start to play around with uh, the different materials, uh, the different colors. Actually, before I even deal with colors, I usually like to start with uh, a neutral color story. I'll usually go with black because at the end of the day, I want to make sure that whatever textures and materials I'm using, they're going to end up um, fitting what I envision for it from, from the beginning. Um, at least for me, a lot of times what happens is if I start playing with color too early on, I lose um, understanding or sort of track of what my original intentions were for certain materials and textures. And so this is just sort of a thing that I do. It just, it helps me keep things in check. Um, and at the end of the day, black usually ends up being a pretty solid color. So <laughs> I'll end up using it anyway. Um, but in terms of lighting, it's usually a three point lighting that I'll use. Uh, these are uh, light panels that are sort of surrounding. These you can place whichever way you'd like, whatever best uh, lights your product. Um, in addition to the light panels, I'll usually add um, um, an HDRI environment just to really uh, ground it in, 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 in sort of in the lighting form, I guess. And so those different combinations of lights usually give me a pretty grounded uh, approach to general lighting to, to product, right? Um, and so from here, that's essentially what, you know, you end up seeing out of, out of a uh, key shot once you, once you apply all your different materials, which you guys can start to see. I mean, it's, it's, pretty incredible. Uh, it starts to look very, very real, very quick. Um, and then, then comes the, the happy time when you start to see, uh, you know, all the different things that you've been able to achieve off of, uh, you know, three programs, uh, three of which honestly, it doesn't, doesn't take that much to, to learn. Uh, take it from somebody like me who had no experience uh, with any of them. And in the span of just a couple months, it's just, it's it's become a thing of mine where it's like, I'm, I'm 
definitely using it now in, in the, the different projects that I've had a chance to work on. Um, it's great for showcasing, uh, concepts for, uh, different clients. You know, if you want approval of concept, um, it's amazing to explore, uh, you know, the full extent of your ideas as, as a designer, um, you get a chance to really dive deep into the different areas, different, uh, sort of corners of the design that, you know, sometimes it's just... It, you, you can't really you can't really know that until you're looking at a physical model. Well, in this situation, you're able to see all of these different things when you're creating this this 3D piece, right? Um, and so, with that, honestly, it, that that's been sort of my journey. I sort of jumped into it, like I said, about a year ago, and I haven't looked back. It, it's been an incredible journey, and I continue to. Uh, learn as I go and uh, falling more and more in love with uh, the incredible tool that is 3D, to be honest. So um, yeah, with that, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, it seems like it was a little bit short, <laughs> but it's all good. I'd rather have it short and, and, and sweet than have it taken too long. But um, please let me know if uh, you guys have any questions. So I'm going to stop the share. Thank you, Jose. This was this was amazing. Uh, yeah, they're saying amazing job for one year. Definitely amazing job. For one year. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. But it's, I mean, it's a testament on how three D tools have become more accessible, easier to oh, use. Completely, yes. Time. Most definitely, it's truly, truly incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, like we all, we all, I think. Not all, but like a lot of people, you can tell the age of the people that, you know, when they hear 3D, you're like, what? No, I don't want yes. to. Because like, uh -huh. right. before it was, it was so hard. <laughs> no, totally. Uh, and I, you know, I've had this conversation with you before. I feel like right now we're at this stage where a lot of designers are now switching to, to 3D, you know, and we're... I want to say like two years ago, it was still kind of like, oh my God, you, do you really have to go into 3D, right? Whereas now it's like, it's almost becoming like a must. And it's 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 really great to be honest because it helps so much with your process. Um, so yeah, it's incredible. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, yeah, 3D is in its prime. Yes. So I'd like to invite Nick Sharma to the conversation. So Nick is one of our other speakers. He's also a footwear designer. He is working at nice. Adobe right now. Um, and so, yeah, he's gonna be asking a few questions. Sounds I hope, um, yeah, Nick, do you have any questions for, for Jose? Yeah, no, and the main, main little questions I have, so I also teach um, along with doing creative design work. So it's more for, getting your perspective, getting into 3D in the first place. So basically what was, you mentioned AutoCAD um, as like your first program you picked up. Were there any other programs you tried to get into from AutoCAD from Gravity Sketch? I had tried a uh, blender in between and I was just not ready. <laughs> I was just not ready. Uh, my brother is in is in the 3D industry. And so he always was trying to get me into using that. And uh, the things he does are absolutely amazing, but it, there was just no way. <laughs> it, it was too much for me at the time. And so that's the thing, like everything just seems so technical, all these different programs, right, that were that were 3D oriented. And, um, and it wasn't until I hit you know, gravity sketch with, you know, the combination of then VR where everything just feels a lot more sort of in tune, like you're actually building something from scratch, you know? Um, yeah, it, it was, it was very intuitive. Yeah. And what was, cause you picked up Blender now and Keyshot. So how did you, like, what was the unlock from picking up gravity sketch and getting back into Blender that um, kind of stopped you from before? Yeah. So, 
at this point, once I once I knew that I could build models, I'm like, okay, I need to I need to do whatever I can to really make sure that I'm uh, fully taking advantage of of everything I can with with what I've created. And so, I knew that with Keyshot, at least at the time, I didn't really know if there was a way to say unwrap or flip normals mm-hmm. more specifically uh, or more detailed the way the way you can do it in Blender. And so, again, I was lucky enough that my brother was there and I was like, yo, man, you got to teach me, you know, <laughs> because I, I really I really wanted to invest as much as I could to really make sure I was, you know, going all the way. And so that's why I ended up getting back in, into Blender. And so slowly I've been getting to to know a little bit more about it. And, you know, eventually I'll, I'll start to transition into trying that out for modeling as well um, as as I continue to grow, you know. Yeah. Has it influenced your professional career as well? Or has it kind of been on your personal side? I'm sorry? Has it influenced your professional career or just been like on the personal side that you've been heavily influenced on 3D work? Oh, professional, for sure. Professional, for sure. Yeah. So I've worked with uh, a couple of clients, uh, mainly just athletic wear, to be honest. Um, but uh, I want to say for most of them, I've, I've, um, I've added 3D product or not 3D product, 3D visuals uh, into basically a, a way for them to approve a concept. And nine times out of 10, as soon as they see that, they instantly understand your idea, uh, where you were wanting to take it. It doesn't matter uh, how well you can sketch. A lot of times there's just little portions that are hard to visualize in a 3D setting. And so having that tool, it just it allows you to really uh, express all your ideas to, to other people, you know? Yeah. And oh. on, on that, I mean, would you say that, you know, through those experiences with clients, have you found that sometimes, cause this, this is a risk, right? Like something that happens sometimes when, when you show a 3d model, because it's so real in a way, even if, even though it's still a sketch, even though it's still something that you're just kind of like trying to express to communicate with the other person, they feel it's so real that the feedback becomes like way more intense or they like just suddenly think that you're done with the project. Have you found that? Um, at least from my experiences, it's usually been... Um, a positive thing. So they see it and it, they instantly, like I said, they instantly understand where you wanted to take the concept. And it's almost like um, a sigh of relief from them because it's like, oh, okay, whew, I get what you're saying. Let's go. You know? Um, yeah. It, it's been positive. It's been positive. Cool. All right. Let's see some questions from the audience. Any hacks for stitching? Ugh. Uh, <laughs> um, and for right now, uh, I'm not proud of how I'm doing the stitching, um, but I do know, I do know that with, um, oh man, I'm forgetting the name of this. It, it's an Adobe uh, <laughs> program. God. Nick, it, maybe you can help. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. It's, it's painter, probably. So that's actually going to be part of my talk that I'll have on. Friday. Yes, so I will yes. Help uh-huh. you out the switching too there. <laughs> yes, uh huh. I've I've seen a couple of tutorials with that. Which uh, yeah, that's my that's my next thing. I, I gotta get into stitching. <laughs> yeah, no, stitching. There, there's ways to make it with a couple clicks of the button. So I'm yeah, 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 for sure. For that sure. part of his life easier. <laughs> yes, yes. By the so way, do yes. join TikTok <laughs> if you want to learn about it. <laughs> uh huh, uh huh. There you go. Mm-hmm. Then another one. I thought it was intuitive to learn Gravity Sketch. How was the learning curve for Blender and Keyshot? Do you watch YouTube tutorials or was it just trial and error? Also, wish there were more tutorials like this workflow. Oh, well, I appreciate that. Um, in terms of um, 
Key shot, there's definitely a lot that you can find on YouTube. That's that's what I ended up doing, just watching uh, a lot of, of YouTube uh, tutorials. Um, I feel like as with anything, tutorials are only going to get you so far. You're going to have to have, you're going to have to go through trial and error. That's just part of the deal. You're going to get frustrated one day and you're going to be super happy the next day. And that's just what it is. Um, so yeah, key shot was great. Blender was a little bit trickier. Um, I, again, I was lucky that my brother was there. I was nagging him like every other day to help me out because I was so lost. Uh, but yes, there are a lot of tutorials on, on Blender as well. It's just, it, it's, it's a different sort of setup. And I think that's what threw me off a little bit, but, um, yeah, I, I would say Keyshot is definitely sort of in the same realm as Gravity Sketch in terms of ease of use. Uh, Blender starts to get a little bit more technical, uh, which is great, but it, it's just, it, it's a little, um, hard to grasp at the beginning. Would you say that through using Gravity Sketch and Keyshot, getting more comfortable with 3D, then it kind of like gave you the confidence to just go the extra mile and like take oh, it a bit more? Yeah, most definitely. I mean, yeah, now now we're looking into Substance uh, Painter, of course. You know, any any tool that will aid your process at this point, it's like, okay, you've already jumped into this. Now let's just keep learning. You know, it definitely gives you that confidence. Yeah. And yeah, we have one last question. Where do you, where do your ideas come from and what are your inspirations? Um, a lot of different things. It's, to be honest, this question is very hard for me to answer because it's so random. Uh, I'll usually start with something like, for example, for this project, something as simple as the idea of, uh, uh, a stirrup heel because I had seen a lot of different fashion brands that were using items as heel pieces, like heel jewels. And coming from, you know, the, the equestrian side, I was like, oh, that'd be cool to have, you know, a stirrup in the back. And so that's how it started. And then it sort of morphed into what you guys are seeing there. And that's just sort of picking from different pieces that I'm seeing that I like. Again, the sort of aggressive outdoor nature of a lot of the product that we're seeing out there. Um, and I've always just been a really big fan of uh, layering because again, it just gives you so much dimension. Um, and so I think that's that's one of my things and most of the things that, I'll, that I tend to create, I usually like to play with that. And so that's almost like a given. I'm usually just like sprinkling that <laughs> into whatever I work on. So um, yeah, I don't necessarily uh, go for, you know, uh, specific things when I'm trying to get inspired. It's more so just whatever works, uh, intuition, you know, it's hard to explain. Yeah. Nice. Well, yeah. Same for tools, right? Like whatever helps you get your, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Sure. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jose. Thank you, Nick, for, for joining us. This has Thanks, been Nick. really inspiring for the Come afternoon. On. Um, all right. So Everyone else, if you want to tune in for the next uh, session with the New Balance team, uh, we'll be back in five minutes. All right, see you. See you guys. Bye. Yeah.